Let's say you were in a grid down scenario, you couldn't go to the store, you couldn't go to the doctor. Could you use common household items that are in your kitchen pantry to take care of some medical problems? So that's what I want to do today. I filmed a class with one of the other members of Field of Fires, Mr. Philip Winters with Twisted Vine Herbs, and he's going to show you how to do just that. If you don't know, every plant's medicinal. It's just what it's good for. And Paracelsi said it's the dosage that makes the poison. So even toxic plants could be medicinal at the right doses. I was thinking, you know, this would be cool. Let's see what we have in the kitchen pantry and see what we can do with this. And so that's how this class kind of came about. So we got rejected from Publix. Yeah, we were going to film at Publix and they wouldn't let us. <laughs> So then I just kind of put this together where it was like, well, let's see what we have in the pantry. What do most people or what is stuff that a lot of people would have in their pantry or they can grow in their herb garden? When I taught at Georgia Bushcraft, I stopped at the local mini buckies. Are you talking about striplings? Yes. Yeah, striplings. Yeah, it's like a mini buckies. And I was checking out and the lady's like, what are you making? I was like, well, teaching a class. She's like, ooh, that sounds like a good class. These are easily if they're not if you don't grow them or don't have them in your pantry they are easily acquired at a grocery store and to start out i'm going to talk about a little bit about onions onions and garlic they're they're similar um, they do have their nuances but they've both been used for centuries thousands of years well let me throw that around thousands of years for their uh, medicinal properties they are antiseptic and they're a diuretic uh, they have an affinity for the lungs so coughs and flus and stuff like that. JJ and I did a TikTok, was it a TikTok video? No. Where we, we made an onion syrup. And so it's really easy to do. What's up FTFers? This is your twisted tip talk of the day. Middle of the night, store closed, got a bad call? You need the boss, the Bloomin' Onion Suppressor Syrup. Here's what you're gonna need. Sugar, an onion, measuring cup, a knife, and a casserole dish. Now that we've cut and peeled, we're gonna bloom this onion. Cut a grid. Now we're blooming. Why do we bloom the onion? To increase the surface area. <laughs> I'm not crying, you're crying. Put the onion in the dish, pour the sugar on, and let it rise. Then we'll take it, bake it, and we'll put the bloom in the oven. Is it done yet? <laughs> I sure could use some. Why do we use an onion? Have you ever had Italian food and your breath is kicking like Bruce Lee the next day? Onions love the chest and the lungs. Why the sugar? It causes fluids to shift in the body, and it tastes good. How do you know when your suppressor is ready? When the onion's clear and the juices are flowing. Molting sugar is extremely painful if you get it on you. Let it cool off for a while. Uh, we're gonna remove the onion, strain it, and we're gonna bottle it. Now you cap it, label it, store it in the fridge. How much to take? For an adult, two tablespoons as needed. For a child, one teaspoon as needed. If the contents twist your vine, leave a twisted remark in the comments. Fuel the fires. Works really well. When we talk about colds and stuff, a lot of these things can be combined together. I'll talk about that a little bit too as I go. And also do a poultice, a plaster, where you do the same thing. You would cook the onion, put a piece of flannel cloth on your chest, put it on your chest, and it would help heat the body and help with the lungs you do the same thing for the little for little little kids um but don't use it hot but cooked and you can put it in their socks as they sleep and it'll pull it out too um, it'll help with clear the lungs garlic similar uses um, it's antiseptic diuretic it helps with dropsy um, which is fluid in the lower extremities coughs and can also help with stomach issues, antibacterial. And there's a lot of ways you can do garlic. One thing that I like to do is ferment the garlic, where you take the garlic and peel them, put them in a um, jar and fill it with honey and then ferment it in there. And it, the longer you let it sit, the better it gets. So then not only are you getting uh, the aspects of the honey, you're getting um, fermentation, so you're getting probiotics and then you can eat the garlic and it helps with viruses, colds, flus. One time my wife and daughter both had strep throat and so I was eating garlic cloves to keep me from getting sick and I never got sick. So it can be rough eating garlic <laughs> for those around you if not for you. I mean, you know, it could <laughs> the people around you may not like it, but uh, 
it also it has an affinity for the lungs also can also do make an oil with it or to tincture it to do drops in the ears for ear aches and stuff next is thyme it's antiseptic antispasmodic it grows well here um, i've plant i planted some probably about 10 years ago and it's still the same plant it just kind of creeps around one of the ways that i like to use it is uh, with inhalations you can take either the thyme itself fresh dried or you can use thyme essential oil uh, boiling water put it in a bowl uh, put some of it in there put a towel over your head and uh, slowly breathe it in and it'll help with sinuses and lungs and different things like that for children you can do like in the babies take them in the shower with you and put some in the shower and not get them under the hot water but let the steam inhalation it helps with that it's in the mint family it's a, it's also a nervine so it's relaxing and it's uh it's anti-inflammatory thyme tea is actually pretty good word of caution if you use essential oils of thyme or any essential oil do not put them directly on your body if they're 100 percent i usually use um essential oils in things like sad and stuff but do not put them on your body because i uh made the mistake I told my wife to put some drops of essential oil in the shower and she misunderstood me and she put them on herself and she had like a chemical burn. So essential oils are very strong. Sage is the next one. Sage tea is very good also. Sage is good for digestion. It's drying to the lungs. So if you have a wet cough, um, it's really good for drying up the lungs, uh, similar to rabbit tobacco. It's really good for sore throats. You could do a spray as a tincture and use it, put in a spray or gargle with some water, strep throat, um, sore throats. It's antioxidants, it's anti-inflammatory, antibacterial. It's good for memory and mental function. Um, as I was researching things it was used for, two things that I thought were very interesting was if it's good for diabetes. Is there's studies that it was as, as effective as metformin, 300 milliliters, 200, uh, two times a day. And it also is good for hot flashes during menopause. So sage is definitely one, if you, if you have diabetes issues, um, I would definitely consider um, planting if you have room for a garden. A lot of these, like I said, would they do re really well. And next uh, we have is cilantro. Some people love it, some people hate it. Some people think it tastes like soap. Cilantro, I have a hard time growing it um, for some reason, but some people can grow it. Usually when I grow it, it goes like directly to seed just about, and I don't get the cilantro that I want. One that could potentially lower cholesterol, lower blood pressure, and um, it's a digestive, and it also one that you can use for heavy metal detox that would be a tea it's not bad um, but I'm one who likes cilantro it doesn't taste like soap to me it tastes pretty good and next uh, we're gonna go on to lemons lemons are they have vitamin C in them so they're good for their antiviral because of the vitamin C um, it's also good for kidney stones juice of 12 lemons you drink the juice of one lemon then you drink so much water do it again wait 15 minutes do it again and do it over a period of time and then whichever side the kidney stone is on, you lay down, like if it's on the left side, you'll lay on your right side and kind of kick your, with your kidney ra uh, raised because the kidneys are kind of, I don't know if you've ever seen the kidney, but they, they, the tube's kind of in the middle and not at the top or the bottom. So you kind of help get the stone to go. And the, the acid in the, um, in, the, in the lemon is what kind of like breaks down the stone makes it smaller where it'll pass. You can look on YouTube, there's videos on how to do it. Next we have is honey, which if you don't know anything about honey, honey is an amazing, every part of the honey process, the everything that the bees do, it's medicinal. It's wonderful property. The propolis, the honey itself, the um, royal jelly, everything is wonderful. And I meant to bring my book and I forgot, but there's a book called uh, um, Sacred, herbal beers written by Stephen Herod Bruner and it has probably one of the best one of the most in-depth honey write-ups I've ever read about the medicinal properties of honey mm. and it's really good especially if you're into making beers and 
wines and stuff like that. It's really cool. Pickle perspective. Um, many, many published studies show that honey is just as effective, if not more effective, for a kid's cough oh, yeah. than dextromethorphan, yeah. which is the primary cough suppressant in over-the-counter treatments. Yeah. That was the first thing on my honey. <laughs> Coughs. <laughs> yes. And even even if even if water gets in the honey, it just makes a wonderful thing called mead. But yeah, honey's good for coughs, like she said, especially for kids. Um, burns, cuts, scrapes is antibacterial, antiviral. Uh, and it can be a wonderful carrier for many of these other herbs. Like you know, like I said, you could do this with the garlic or you know, um, and then you can also meads. Uh, which are honey wine so when you you can and that's what i make um, medicinal meads so i'll take some like i've done several different kinds like i did elderberry so i made use my elderberries uh, made mead with that so then i have a shelf stable elderberry mead so i get the the elderberry plus i get the honey and i get um and then shelf stable fermented anything local I'm always down for that. So if somebody close to you, you know, or uh, somebody you meet, farmer's markets, I would definitely, you know, get that honey as opposed to the honey on some of the, you know, grocery store. If you buy it regionally, it'll have the pollens and the, the bees that right. collect right. it and things that right. you're going to be reacting right. to. Right, so it can help with allergies for the from the wildflowers and stuff like that. Um, get stronger with time because it ferments harder, or is that just like a standard... Once you once you, you're done fermenting it and you bottle it, it's like wine. You just let it age. It just gets better with age. This one I gave it to a herbalist friend of mine. It was it's cross it was cross vine mead. I said, now don't drink it all at one time. It's pretty it's strong. You know, I just just you know a little bit at a time. So he, I I gave it to him for Christmas, and then he I come back and talk to him and he goes, he's like man, he's like. I was like, what a better day. I'll open this on Christmas. So he opens it and he starts drinking on Christmas morning, you know, before, you know, he's sipping on or whatever. By 9 a.m. he was laid out in the front yard throwing up. <laughs> I was like, what did you do? He's like, I drank the whole bottle. He's like, it's so good. I couldn't stop. And I was like, oh my gosh. Uh, his wife was like, yeah, thanks. And he's like out in the front yard on Christmas throwing up. Uh, like I told you enough about the meat going on to potatoes so potatoes yes they are medicinal also you can use the peels uncooked for burns I'll just peel it and use the inside potatoes are good for drawing and for arthritis so you boil it or microwave it bake it you know get the inside hot as you can and you as hot as you can stand without burning yourself you apply it you know to your wherever you have arthritic pain or, or whatever. But it's also Daryl, um, my mentor Daryl, he uses it. And I've done this too uh, recently where it'll, for a brown recluse bite, oh. you can use, there's a, you can take the potato, bake it or microwave it, however you want to do it. Cut it in half, put it on the bite or wherever. And when it cools off, take it off, take the other half, put it on there and till it cools off and it'll draw the poison out and then use the plantain that we saw yesterday, the plant, mm -hmm. plantain, mm -hmm. uh, make a poultice or um, you can put directly on there or take a piece of flannel or cotton cloth, put it down and then you can blend up. If you find enough plantain, you can blend it up in a blender and keep it in the fridge and then just change that every few hours too. Um, I had a guy call me uh, not too, uh, it was a couple months ago and he's like, Hey, I'm friends with so-and-so and such and such. Do you, you know, I got bit by a brown recluse. Do you, can you do anything for me? And I was like, uh, yeah. So we did that. And within, I think this was on a Thursday or Friday. And I think by, um, Monday, the skin was turning pink and turn, getting better. And it was starting to spread too. He got bit once and it was like three or four spots. And so, and so I give him some echinacea to take internally also. Um, so within, you know, a week later, he said, yeah, it's good. So he's definitely wanting to keep in the, definitely keep potatoes around. Yeah, Daryl gave me that recipe too, because I got a uh, black widow bite, and it was festering, and, and he's 
like just mash up some taters. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so I did that. Yeah. Stuck it on there and it yeah. worked. But I did the echinacea and the plantain too. Yeah. So you cook it first? Yeah. Hot as you can stand without burning yourself, without causing, you know, an additional burn. Right. Yeah. But that heat will draw the, help draw the toxins out too. And it, and it does that for, uh, I don't want to assume anything, but uh, arthritis is osteoarthritis? Yes. Yes. Osteoarthritis. I'm going to have to try that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, so I was wondering, and I don't see why it wouldn't work if you bought like <laughs> instant mashed potatoes, right. as long as they were potatoes. I don't oh, see yeah. why that Without wouldn't. Without anything else. Right. If it was yeah. just like the potatoes, <laughs> heat them with hot water and make a make a mashed potato, you know, a poultice. So, yeah. And it was also something you could do carry in the woods yeah. with you. <laughs> you could, yeah, just a uh, cotton cloth. You can just put a cotton cloth down, uh, muslin or bandana or old T-shirt or something. You know. And then you would apply it to your skin. The um, well, I would put the potato directly on oh. for the bite, right. but then the plantain you could do, oh, yeah, just the a, yeah, so like the instant mashed potatoes would work, yeah. like because they'd be easier to carry than a potato. Next, we have cayenne, it's heating to the body, it, it can be used to stop heart attacks. Um, if you can get somebody to take, take it, uh, tea or just not you know, sip a tea, but get it. Water down, get it in there, get it into them. It also is a styptic; it'll stop bleeding externally. So if you cut yourself, uh, it's a vas vasodilator. Oh, yeah. So it'll push, you know, things out, you know, push blood out to the extremities. So it's good for prostate health. Um, it's also good for arthritis, osteoarthritis, and you can do same thing. You can make a salve um, with it, or you could do. That you have to worry about the only thing we have, if you have sensitive skin or fair skin about it burning, um, but you could do a salve like in olive oil and beeswax, and it shouldn't cause that, but it can raise a blister. So if you're sensitive skin, you got to be careful. I have a friend; he uh, he drinks cayenne tea all the time. I mean, he he if he feels like he's getting sick, that's when he'll go to the cabinet and get some cayenne hot water and drink it down and it usually helps you know because you're raising your body temperature a little bit raising and uh cook the viruses there's a here's a, a study on it and we just read or Stephen pointed out that it can also be used for shingles um externally uh on the actual shingles I would testify to that. so just real quick if you don't mind emory and philip my wife caught shingles in mexico on the way back Whatever these two cooked up, <laughs> within three days, she was on the mend, and within a week, boom, gone. And no signs of anything else. Cool. So, Whatever these two cooked topically up. or, or internally? Internally. Oh, internally? Both. Yeah, I, both. Well, lemon balm and heal all yeah, internally, and L lysine, and then. Yeah, definitely the lysine. And uh, um, ghost pipe for pain. But the cayenne can be used topically, lemon balm can be used topically, and heal all. Yes. Is that a different no, that's it. Okay. Yeah, the okay. cayenne. That's the that's the botanical name. Name is capsaicin. capsaicin. They make a lot of over the counter creams for arthritis right. because it'll it'll actually change how your pain receptors mm. right. react to. So yeah. You'll, you'll feel heat instead of pain. Right. I use it on bug bites. Mm. I'd rather burn than itch. Yeah. Well, that's the same <laughs> principle. That's the same principle. Like if you get bit. <laughs> Chigger bites or mosquito bites, mm. put hot water on as hot as you can stand, and it'll um, confuse the nerves, and then it won't itch for several hours. Uh, next, we have ginger. This is the commercial ginger. It is heating to the body also. It's good for arthritis. It's good for uh, stomach cramps, stomach issues. Take it like about a chunk of garlic like this, boil it in a gallon of tea or a gallon of water, make a tea, draw a hot bath. Pour some, pour that into the bath, and then drink some as you're taking a bath, and you will sweat, gangbusters. You will sweat, and it will, and it definitely helps with. Uh, Cause I was getting sick one time, and I did that. I felt like I was getting sick, and the next morning I woke up, I felt like a million bucks. Um, so it definitely can be used for that, and also it can be used for menstrual cramps, the same way that similar thing, if you want to. Next, 
we have rosemary. Rosemary, it grows very well here. It's a, it grows into a, a bush, so it gets pretty big. Extreme cold will kill it. Mine got killed in that extreme cold we had a few years ago that lasted like two weeks. Yeah. Um, but rosemary is a very good one for stomach issues, uh, stomach cramping, um, gallbladder issues, um, bloating. It's very calming. It tastes good. It's good on chicken. Um, it's good for memory. The uh, like the the Rom the Romans and Greeks when you see they have those like things around their head, them halos, their rosemary, so they can help them think better. They've done studies with students who've taken studied for exams with rosemary essential oils and rosemary, and then taking the exam and they do better. Seem to do better with the rosemary. Like if I was making a tea, I would do uh, probably about a what about a teaspoon you know they have tea ballers you know something like that do about like that for you know if I had like stomach cramps and from something I ate that would be enough to help soothe it any of these would that would be plenty uh, next we have is bananas um, which I, I have a if you're interested and you're a nerd there's like a 20 page study on bananas <laughs> So bananas are very nutritious. Um, they're good for burns, constipation in children, stomach ulcers, intestinal lesions, high blood pressure. Two times a day can help lower blood pressure. They have a lot of potassium in them. They help with kidney function. They're a prebiotic. They normalize colon function. They're easily digested in infants. Helps with chronic diarrhea in babies. And the peel you can use for mosquito bites. Uh, it's antifungal, antibiotic, and it helps with poison ivy rash and you can eat it. Bananas taste good if you like them. Um, so you can use the fruit for the burns, the actual banana part inside. You use the peels um, for, the, for the poison ivy and bug bites, the inside. Um, and it also contains allantoin, which is, uh, it helps regenerate tissue similar to the plantain mm -hmm. that we have down, the, the plant plantain. And so you can use bananas, plantains, the same, the green cooking bananas, the same. Next, we have apples, apple a day. You know, the saying apple a day keeps the doctor away. It could be very true. Um, apples, um, they're very nutritious. They, uh, they're easily digested. The juice alkalizes in the body so it can help with stomach activity. Uh, fruit cleans teeth and gums. Um, and if you know someone who has any apple trees, the apple leaves themselves are a, a broad spectrum antibiotic. They're, they're effective against gram negative and gram positive bacteria. Uh, you, said the what? You, you said the leaves are? Broad spectrum antibiotic. Oh, okay, got it. They're both effective against gram negative and gram positive bacteria. Um, one of the things that, uh, about apples that, that blew me away is a personal story. My grandfather, he had, when he was a kid, this was back, he was born in 1930, so he was probably early 40s. Him and his brothers were playing in the creek, and his brother, I don't know if it was a slingshot or a rock or what, but he hit him in the eye, like right in the eye with a, with a rock. So his dad took an apple and smashed it up, put it on his eye, wrapped his eye up, um, left it like that for, I think, two weeks. Then he changed it, did it again, um, and his eye was fine. Fast forward 20 years later, he goes to the eye doctor. The eye doctor is looking at his eyes. He's like, what happened to your eye? He's like, my brother hit me with a rock. My dad took an apple, um, wrapped it up. And the doctor's like, you should be blind in that eye. He said, there's, he's like, I'm, I don't know how you can't, how you're not blind. And as far, as long as I know, I've known him, I had known him. He passed away last year. He was, or this past year is 94. I known him since he was 70 or late 60s. And I'd never seen him wear glasses other than just reading glasses. So he, uh, his vision was good most of his life, you know, without, even after getting hit in the eye. And you could see the hole in his eye. If you looked at him, you could see where he had gotten hit with that rock. So, so and another thing, other than just that, apples are also good for eye uh, infections and eye issues. Right. Next, we have cinnamon, um, which cinnamon is, is really good. Uh, antimicrobial it's any fungal infection infections or any fungus 
issues, I would use this uh, cinnamon externally, internally. Um, it's It's got wonderful antimicrobial uh, properties and it's also good if against for the human rotavirus it will help kill that so which my daughter had that when she was little and it's not pretty and cinnamon's easy to add to just about anything uh coffee tea um it's in a lot of stuff it's i wouldn't to help with um, diabetic it's supposed to help yeah blood sugar. blood sugar there yeah there's a lot of things it's good for yeah. um so cinnamon is definitely one you want to keep around. Next, we have black tea, just regular black tea. Uh, it's astringent, um, so you could use it for like pink eye or sore eye. Put it on your eye, heat it up, wet it, put it on your eye for pink eye to help with that the pink eye infection or any kind of wound that's uh, weeping or wet. You could do that because it's astringent. Um, contains tannins. Next is coffee. Um, it's got caffeine. A lot of people drink it. <laughs> it's, it can help with headaches, migraines. Um, it gives you energy. Uh, it also contains tannic acid. Back in the 1920s, they were using tannic acid for burn victims. I wouldn't do it hot, definitely cold. And then to my favorite thing, okra. Yes. Okra, Steven. Okay. So if you're interested, there's a 27 page study on okra. Okra has amazing properties. Everybody knows okra slimy. That's what you want. You want the slime. Because of the slime, the mucilaginousness of it, it is soothing, coating, and healing from your mouth down to your backside. It, the entire digestive tract, it can help with uh, inflammation. Um, it also helps with the lungs. If your lungs are hot and inflamed, throat, um, it helps with urinary problems, constipation, uh, diarrhea. Um, but it also, it contains polysaccharides, which are large chain sugar molecules. Um, so it, that's, and so it's heal, really healing to the gut. And it can also, because of that, it can help lower blood sugar. Yep. Um, it tastes awesome, pickled. <laughs> But, yeah, but uh, and if and it's it, it's uh it also the the seeds themselves are 20% oil, so you can actually make an oil from the seeds. It can be pressed in to make okra oil. Um, and you know if anybody's ever grown okra, it's really easy to grow. It really likes hot weather. Um, but and when they get too big, you you miss a day of picking, and they get to be this big. Those are the ones that I would save and dehydrate because then you can take these like with stomach issues, um, stomach ulcers, take them, boil them, take the slime, and I usually add it with like yellow root, and it, it, work, it does wonders for the stomach, so. I boiled all that up and froze my okra water for when I need it. There you go. That okra water is great, so. All right, I'll give it up for Philip. All right, FTFers, there you have it. Mr. Philip Winter with Twisted Vine Herbs. If you want to see some of the other members of Fuel the Fires, then let me know in the comments section and I can make it happen. Until then, like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and until next time, keep fueling those fires.